And hello and welcome to Arts and Entertainment. I'm Deborah Gilbert, your host. And as always, thanks so much for being here. I hope you enjoy the show. Well, we have another gem to highlight today. It's called The Kate, and it's a theater that's based in Old Sabre, Connecticut. And Brett Elliott, the executive director, is my guest today. And Brett, thanks so much for being here. Such a pleasure to have you. Oh, thanks so much for having me, of course. Um, People will probably say, the Kate, I don't know what it is, where you are, uh, Old Saybrook Shore, of course. <laughs> Why don't you tell us about the Kate and its history? Yeah, sure. So the Kate is on Main Street, Old Saybrook. We're right in front of uh, Town Hall. We were formerly Town Hall. The building was years ago. We're uh, adjacent uh, on the town green across from the fire station. Um, the Kate has been open for nearly 15 years now. Um, however, the building originally was built in 1911 as a theater, um, and it was a lot of things between the 30s and when it was restored to a theater in the um, early 2000s when Town Hall moved to the building behind us. So it's nice to see it return to its former glory, and it was done really well, and there were some renovations that happened to allow for more lobby space. Um, and uh, yeah, we've been going, going strong since 2009 when we opened. One of the things that I like to do, which I didn't do right now, is to start the program with you. <laughs> Could you tell us a little bit about your background? Tell us about yourself. Sure. So, um, well, I've been at the Kate for just over nine years now. Um, prior to that, I was in Chicago. I worked for Chicago Shakespeare Theater and was uh, completing my uh, MFA in arts leadership with DePaul University. Uh, but I'm not a stranger to the shoreline here in Connecticut. Prior to that, I worked at the Eugene O'Neill Theater Center for four summers and three years. Um, I'm originally from Michigan, and uh, I made my way this direction through the Kennedy Center's American College Theater Festival. Um, I was a stage manager, and I was granted a fellowship at the O'Neill my first summer through the Kennedy Center. Did you think you're mentioning stage management and, and you did lighting as well. Did you think that you would be behind the scenes for forever as an artist? Well, I knew I wouldn't be on stage, that's for sure, because I did a little bit of that when I was in high school. I, mean, I, I was Harold Hill and the Music Man my senior year, but we'll leave those days behind. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I, I really enjoy stage management and technical theater, um, but I really enjoy arts administration. I think in arts administration, finding arts leaders who understand the, um, the process and how, and the respect for artists and musicians um, instead of just the bottom line uh, is important. And I think I kind of bring both of those things to, to the table in my job. So by being an artist and doing arts administration, you're able to kind of bring both to light to be able to help the artist that's coming through? Yeah, I think you just have an understanding of to both sides of, uh, you know, being on both sides of that table, for sure. Arts administration, probably people are saying, I'm not sure what that means. What does that mean to you? <laughs> uh, sure, well, it can mean a lot of different things. I, you know, in, in regional theaters and other uh, venues, there's a lot of different administrative roles, managing directors and executive directors and development directors and all of those things. Um, in the nonprofit side where I'm at, certainly we do a lot of fundraising um, and uh, care for our space. And I book all of the entertainment that comes through the Kate as well. So I have a little bit of an artistic hat. Um, we don't have a separate artistic director. Um, so, you know, the Kate is a small team. We're six full-time staff members, eight regular part-time staff members, plus our technicians and cleaners and everyone else. And so I wear many hats. Um, the Kate itself is different than a normal theater. You, you, you said last time when you were here, a presentation theater where acts are coming through and then leave. What is that all about? Uh, sure, well, um, for example, everybody knows probably good speed in the area. They're a producing theater where they create their own work that they put up in a season, you know, six, eight weeks for a show. We're presenting theater, meaning that we're not creating that work at the Kate. We're bringing that work onto our stage to present for audiences. So it may be there for one or two nights. Some presenting theaters um, like the Bushnell might bring in a show for two weeks at a time, a Broadway tour, for example. But um, similarly to the Bushnell, we're not creating the work, we're presenting the work. Tell us about the artist or the group or the the entity itself that would like to be coming to the Kate. What do they do? Do they present themselves to you? How? Yeah. Uh, yes. So a lot of um, acts have come simply by calling or emailing info at the Kate with recommendations or suggestions. We do have relationships with a lot of agents, agencies that represent large groups of artists or a certain um, type of artist, a lot of blues artists or, or, or um, 
tribute acts or other types of things. So with those relationships come a lot of conversations about you know rebooking uh, artists that have already come through or new artists. Um, just this morning I put in, I think I'm up to about 14 offers today for future show, meaning an offer meaning um, you know, all the terms of, uh, of a, a show deal from our perspective and then we'll negotiate with the agent from there and then there'll be a contract and we'll sign the contract and that'll guide the process through the rest of the way. Um, but the initial step is for us to put in an offer of interest, you know, in a, in a proposal. Um, what are the kinds of things that the Kate puts on on a yearly basis? Yeah, um, we present a lot of things, um, a lot of different things. 325 shows in 2023, so it's a busy place. It is primarily a music venue. I would say about 75% of what we present is music. We also present theater um, in a few different formats. Um, the Saybrook Stage Company is with us uh, two weeks a year, one week in uh, January and one week in July. We'll also do a few um, one-off theater productions. Um, we had a, a one-man show about Harry Truman last summer, and we're looking at something for this summer, sort of similar, an evening with Groucho, or Ed Asner came through with some of his one-man shows. Comedy, we do a lot of comedy. Um, Best of the Boston Comedy Festival sends us really great comedians, not necessarily big names, but really quality folks, and they've built a brand. But we also present Paul Poundstone and Colin Quinn and other comedians that come through during the course of a year. Um, opera, the Saltmarsh Opera is at the Kate, live opera each fall. But the Metropolitan Opera, we do all the um, live simulcasts from the Metropolitan Opera. Um, and then from there we have museum programming um, to go along with our museum, um, special topics with the, you know, special presentations about particular things in Kate, Catherine Hepburn's career. Um, and there's many other things that we present during the course of the year. I, all sorts of things have appeared on our stage for sure. Dance as well, um, our education programs, you know, our, the kids are on our stage for that. So a lot of neat things. You're mentioning the museum and education for kids. Let's talk about both of them. Tell, let's start with the museum. Tell us yeah. about that. So we are the only um, uh, cultural arts center named after Katherine Hepburn, but in addition to having all of the work we present on our stage, we have a museum. Uh, it's on our first level. Um, it is free and open to the public. We do suggest a donation if you're coming just to see the museum because it helps us care for and preserve the items that we have and also make new acquisitions. Um, Currently, we have a special exhibit open called Cover Girl Kate that is in one of our uh, special exhibit cases, and it tracks eight decades of Katharine Hepburn gracing the cover of magazines because she had such a long career and um, you know, was so popular. Um, so that's a really neat exhibit, and, and with that, we have some costumes that go along with some of those um, magazine covers uh, or um, publication covers. Uh, there was a publication from the 40s that a pastel of Katharine Hepburn was done, and uh, we have the original pastel painting. It's large, it's also on display. Um, the museum also has some really unique things. There's an exhibit about the hurricane of 38 that affected the shoreline here. Um, the Hepburn home in Fenwick was washed out to sea, but the bathtub remained. There's a great picture of Kate sitting next to it, uh, and we have that bathtub in the museum. So, you know, how many other museums have a bathtub? <laughs> Right? I have seen it. It's right? yeah. great to see. And, and some of her personal items um, yeah, on display as well, where feature exhibits may include you know, much of her wardrobe. We have several things that we can show from there. Um, and other costumes as well. There's a great uh, costume from the State of the Union on display right now. Um, and um, there's a sea, uh, corn is green costume on display right now as well. So it's a really neat exhibit. It's not a large, large space, but it tells a wonderful story. Where do you get your items? <laughs> uh, well, so yes, we do uh, have acquisitions come to us during the year, um, both from auction occasionally, if there's the right piece that we really want. Um, we're also in a position where as we've been around for 15 years and folks know about the Kate and know about the museum, there are private collectors who would like to see uh, very special pieces that they have acquired one way or another um, come to the Kate so that they're preserved. We of course have to validate those, uh, you know, make sure everything is authentic and we're telling the correct story. Um, but uh, we get items that way and we take items on loan. We have two costumes from a private collector in Los Angeles right now, two of Kate's costumes that uh, are on loan. Um, we actually have a, a piece on loan from um, the University of Hartford right now as well, and, and I'm going to get their name wrong, formerly Connecticut Historical Society, now Connecticut Museum of History and Culture, I believe. Uh, we have a piece on loan from them. 
Let's talk about education sure. and in general or just children. What's that about? Yeah, so um, the Kate's education programs are growing, going through a lot of changes right now, but our signature program, Kate's Camp for Kids, has been around for, I believe this will be the 12th summer. Uh, I believe we're gonna have seven weeks of Kate's Camp for Kids between 36 and 48 children each week. Um, it's five to 10 year olds. It's a little bit less about creating a show and more about skill and confidence building. Uh, Martha Hurley is our camp director. Uh, she's wonderful. Um, we have a wonderful st staff for the camps program and uh, they uh, have wonderful weeks. I mean, it, it's a very popular program. Our summer spotlight program is our 11 to 13 year olds where they create um, more music and theater. And they also do a performance at the end of their week. I think we're looking at three weeks of summer spotlight this year. And then during the year, we have other programs as well. Um, both programs that bring kids to the Cape in the evenings, like our camps program, one night a week after school. Or we have um, two presentations of Harlem on my mind coming in about the Harlem Renaissance at the end of February, where students are coming in from schools during school time to see that performance. So lots of great opportunities for sure. OK, well, let's hold that thought. We're going to take a break. Great. I'm Deborah Gilbert. You are tuned in to Arts and Entertainment. We're going to take a break. And we'll be right back. Welcome back to Arts and Entertainment. I'm Deborah Gilbert, your host, and as always, thanks so much for being here. Well, we're highlighting the Kate, and we're going to talk more about what that means, and Brad Elliott, the executive director, continues to be my guest. And people may hear the Kate or Katherine Hepburn. Tell us how that happened. Are you dealing with the family to get that name <laughs> qualified? Yeah, well, so let, let's, let's start with the fact that um, Kate may have, or may have not, but may have said that she never wanted a building named after her, or at least while she was alive. So um, we do hold her name, and it, that was granted by the estate, which the family does have some um, stake in. And uh, Kate had already passed in 2003 before the building became the Kate or the Catherine Hepburn Cultural Arts Center when it reopened in 2009. Of course, Kate was our uh, you know, probably most famous local resident for, for decades, uh, you know, with her home in Fenwick. And uh, everybody has a story about seeing Kate on her bike or going into waltz or, you know, being in town. And, uh, you know, I like to think that Catherine Hepburn loved art and loved um, sort of that process and, and giving everything your best. And I'd like to think that she'd be pretty proud of what we've done over the last 15 years with that. And the thing with Old Saybrook and the Kate is kind of synonymous now. You just think about the two of them together. And we've talked before about the relationship. How is the relationship between the theater and the town? Oh, it's great. So the Kate is a town building. Um, uh, that is a well-published fact. And uh, we have a great relationship with the town. Carl Fortuna, the first selectman, and, and zoning and all the different commissions. Um, you know, we have become a pretty great community partner in a lot of ways. We host events for the town, um, the Saybrook uh, Street Festival festival or celebrate Saybrook the street festival we did last June the Kate handled all the entertainment on the stage uh, the mobile stage outside for that so um, yeah we've become a pretty integral part of old Saybrook um, you know things as simple as all the holiday decorations we put up on the building and, and you know just how we think about ourselves positioned in the town I think is important 
It's a beautiful building. What you've done there is exquisite. Yeah, thank you. I mean, it was a beautiful building to begin with, right? And then we just got to keep enhancing it with the Walk of Fame and, you know, the uplighting on the columns and our marquee that went up a few years ago, um, thanks to a, a very special funder who made that happen. So, yeah. Um, the website. Sure. When the viewer visits it, uh, the Kate.org, yeah. what will they find when they go to it? They will find so many shows, they might be a little overwhelmed at first, but <laughs> um, that's okay. There are a lot of different ways to sort and look through those shows. You can certainly look through the list version in date order, or go to a, a calendar version and click through and look for dates that you might be looking to, you know, venture out to a special dinner and a show. Or uh, we launched a new website actually this past summer in 2023. You can sort by genres as well. So if you just like comedy or you just like blues artists or you just like a certain thing, you can sort by those and it'll tell you all of the shows that are upcoming um, within that bucket, which is a really great feature because with 325 shows, it can be quite a bit to uh, um, look through. And I will mention that we, we sort of think in seasons, but we are always booking. We're always adding shows. It's not as though we, you know, on January 1st, everything for 2023 is available. We're still booking later in the year. So always keep checking back because there's always new things coming. You mentioned the award during the break. Let's talk about that. Sure, the Spirit of Catherine Hepburn Award. Uh, that is a beautiful bronze statue of Kate that is given out each year, each summer at our summer gala. Um, it is one further way that we continue to enhance Kate's legacy. Um, and it's given to a person who either embodies the bold spirit of Kate, or in many uh, instances, the person also had a connection to Kate. This last year, it was Candace Bergen. Um, it was Martina Navatilova the year before. Martina was a huge, or of course, a tennis player, right? And uh, Kate was a huge tennis fan. They were friends in real life. Glenn Close was with us um, several years ago at this point, and uh, she credits the fact that she continued acting to Katherine Hepburn. It was, she was one of her greatest role models. She specifically talks about the Dick Cavett, Katherine Hepburn interview that's pretty iconic and seeing that, and that was the moment that she knew that she wanted to continue acting. So it's been wonderful folks. Sam Waterston was there. He was in the Glass Menagerie with Kate. Um, it's been a wonderful, Dick Cavett received the first year actually. So it's a wonderful award, a wonderful way to remember Kate each year. We do an interview with the recipient, so we get really great stories, and um, we're really proud of that. Now, you were talking about international and national acts that come through, but you mentioned local. Yeah. Tell us what that means. Yeah, well, I think the Kate is really unique because what we present on our stage is a really interesting mix of national acts that are touring or international acts, a lot of um, you know, artists from Ireland or other parts of the world, but also local acts. So on any given week, we could see Judy Collins or Graham Nash, but we will also see folks from Eastern Connecticut Ballet with Spooktacular or Vista Life Innovations and their All Abilities production, their uh, shared stage production is at the Kate. And we're so proud of that. It's, uh, it's really wonderful that we can bounce between those things and um, be this wonderful community uh, resource in so many different ways, not just bringing entertainment, but allowing other voices to be on our stage. Now, Terry Carigliano of the Saybrook Stage Company yeah. is a guest and a dear friend. Mm -hmm. And I just saw her play again, but you were listed as lighting, I believe. <laughs> I was. Tell us how you're able to juggle both. Is it something that you still want to do? <laughs> I do it for Terry. Uh, <laughs> you know, when I uh, probably 12 or 13 years ago, um, when I worked at the O'Neill, I did some freelance lighting. I was a technician, did a lot of technical work for Lime Old Lime High School. And the last year that I was in Connecticut before grad school, they did Footloose, and they did Footloose at the Kate because their uh, auditorium was being renovated. And that's how I got introduced to the Kate. And so I, I've always loved lighting. I love color. I love creating textures and feelings and moods and. Um, and so I uh, had told Terry a few years ago, I'd do one of their shows, and then she you know, tries to wrangle me into it every show. And I, <laughs> I've said I can do the winter one, the summer is a bit busier at the Cape, but I was really glad to be part of Matchmaker. So it was, it was a fun show, for sure. It was a fun show. I'm glad I went. Yeah. How do you, do you like doing the lighting as compared to what you're doing <laughs> in arts administration? Is it a nice break? Yeah, you know, I think um, for me, if I had an executive director job that was strictly at a desk and had very little connection to the art on stage, um, I wouldn't love the job nearly as much. But because I get to be part of the artistic process and I'm you know, deciding on what entertainment is coming to the Kate, and occasionally I get to do lights or some other pieces, 
or even just you know being part of lighting and ensuring that our theater has the best equipment around you know I understand what that means and um, I think I enjoy that part of my job uh, having those creative aspects of it and I think when people hear Katherine Hepburn they'll probably say but do you have any Katherine Hepburn films and I would say yes you do is that something that you strive to continue yeah we have a cake classic as we call them uh, typically each month uh, 10 to 11 a year occasionally there's a, a month where we'll be at the end of a month and we'll then be at the top of a you know a month after that um, and it plays at, those play at 2 and 7 p.m. on those dates. And then we also have our Hollywood Gem series, which are not Katherine Hepburn films, but we have one of those typically a month as well. Those play at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, but they have a connection to the Kate Classic that is playing that month. It might be a shared co-star or a shared director or some aspect that brings them together, same, you know, same topic of the film or something. So those have been really fascinating. And speaking of film, you do have films that are shown there besides theater and music. Tell us about that. Sure, yeah, so the Kate Classics and the Hollywood Gems, but then in addition to that, the Metropolitan Opera, of course, is on screen. We do each of the live shows plus an encore. Um, the National Theater Live, which come to us from the National Theater over in London, their um, filmed performances from there come to our stage. And then occasionally there's other pieces as well. Um, actually, the um, Frames in Film series with the Florence Grizzled Museum. There is an art film each month as part of that Frames in Film series. Um, uh, Black Art on Screen in the Absence of Light is our February film coming up. Um, and that one is actually free, a uh, wonderful opportunity. And, uh, and then there's sometimes there are, you know, um, old school summer blockbusters from the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s that will sprinkle in in the summer just for fun. Jaws, who doesn't like to see Jaws on the shoreline in Connecticut, right? <laughs> and you've one heck of a screen. Yeah, we do, for sure. We've invested pretty heavily in surround sound and our projectors. We, it's a really great experience. How many seats are in the theater? 284 sellable seats in the theater. Um, and, uh, you know, so when I say we did 65,000 tickets last year and you think, well, 284 at a time, boy, that's a lot of shows. It is, but not every show sells out either, and we don't book it that way. You know, there are things we take chances on, things that we think our audience should see, and sometimes it's sold out and sometimes it's not. And uh, we just work as hard as we can to get as many people into every show. Interesting you should say that. Who or how do you decide will be performing or be presented yeah. at the Kate. Yeah, that's, uh, I, there's not an exact formula for that, that is for sure. Um, I do make those decisions or make those decisions with my team. Um, you know, we see a lot of things return to the Kate that have been there, but we're always trying new things. Um, some of our bigger shows coming up right now, Roseanne Cash will be back with us this spring, and she was last at the Kate for the Connecticut Public Television series, The Kate, that aired for several seasons prior to the pandemic. Um, we're also doing Herb Elpert uh, with um, his wife over at um, Connecticut College Palmer Auditorium. Um, we needed a larger space, so we're thinking about this sort of partnership over there. It's our box office, and we'll be presenting Herb in May at Palmer Auditorium. Speaking of that, we talked about that before we started taping. Tell us about that other theater. What made you decide to go outside of the Kate? Yeah, well, we think that the intimacy of our very special theater, the Kate, is one of our greatest selling points. And so we don't want to mess with that too much. But occasionally there's an artist that we really want to keep working with and maybe they've, out, you know, they've grown a bit since they started performing at the Kate. Herb Alpert was last at the Kate two summers ago, I think. We really just needed a bigger space. Uh, and, um, to make it all work. There was a semi truck for all the equipment parked out front and we're not a very big theater. So we got creative and um, with Palmer Auditorium, it's, you know, it's a university auditorium and I know one of the folks over there and I said, can we try to make this work? And um, it, it's our box office, it's our, it's our everything. So it's just like, it'll be as close to a Kate experience as we can just at another venue. What are your thoughts for the future for the Kate? I mean, how many years are you open now? Uh, just just under 15 so yeah what are your thoughts do you have a mission statement for the next five years uh, well we have a mission statement in general yes uh, of course but uh, I think you know continue growth continue to try new things new opportunities new artists new voices um, you know there's a lot of things our audiences love and they want to see keep coming back and I'll try to keep bringing all of those things back but I want to see new things as well um, you know there are a lot of artists out there and a lot of unique perspectives and voices and we need to showcase those for the artist that is listening to us now, or agent, et cetera, that would be able to present themselves to you, how do they do that? Yeah, just give us a call uh, or email info at thekate.org and that'll eventually make its way to me. Um, there's lots of information on our website as well. 
what are your thoughts? Will you be with the Kate for a while? <laughs> That's a big question. I mean, uh, you know, I love my job. I, I, I don't plan to go anywhere at the moment, but you never know what the future holds. And, um, you know, you never know also when there might need to be a new voice at the Kate to make those programming decisions. Not saying it's now, but, you know, I like to, the Kate is more important than the person for sure. We are starting to run out of time. Yeah. What are some of your closing thoughts for the viewer that's watching us now? Maybe for the first time or has heard you before? Yeah, well, for those who are hearing from me for the first time and haven't been to the Kate, what are you waiting for, right? Uh, you know, there's lots of things to choose from. Um, come check out the museum. I'm always amazed when people come to the museum and say, oh, you do performances here? Oh my goodness, yes, where have you been? But, uh, you know, we're so happy to have people come in and experience our space in so many different ways. Well, I want to thank you very much for being here. It's been a pleasure, and always, you're always welcome to come back. Well, thank you. Okay. I'm Deborah Gilbert. You have been tuned in to Arts and Entertainment. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the show. In case you need to reach me, I'm at artsandentertainment at mail.com. Well, I hope you have a super day today, and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much.